Welcome to yet another edition of Politics Done Right, streaming directly from Netroots in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm here today with Troy Williams. Troy, Absolutely. Uh, thank you so <laughs> kindly for spending some time with us. Troy, um, let, let's start with the negative, okay, and then we're mm -hmm. going to move on from there. Absolutely. Uh, you were incarcerated for 25 years? I was incarcerated 25 years of my life for... Um, participating in a takeover robbery of a computer parts company in California. Uh, you know, I grew up in California, gang banging in that whole world and growing up in that life, you know, I, I did what gang bangers do. Uh, uh, let, let, let me first tell you um, what I wanted to, uh, I asked you, I, I, I saw your, your badge where it says restorative media. Right. What you told me is that the impression that the media gives us about uh, the incarcerated and the lives of the people being incarcerated is all wrong. What is it that you're bringing that you want to make folks aware of? Well, I think it's about narrative control, right? It's about us having control over the narratives that are told and spoken about us, right? Oftentimes you'll see media companies go into a setting and they'll tell this negative, this negative story from an outside perspective, right? They'll use fear mugging techniques, which actually cause more divisiveness than anything. And um, so back in the day, uh, these media companies would come in and they would like places like lock up, even National Geographic came in and they did this whole story about um, Scott Peterson and, and they were going around asking people what would they do if they caught, caught Scott Peterson on the yard. So it's always some outside journalists coming in looking for the sensationalized story that is going to give people shock value. But what they don't do is they don't go in and not, they're not talking to the father who is actually uh, remorseful um, for what he's done, uh, who actually like sees the outcome of what his behavior has done to his community and to his even to his own family, right? So those narratives, those stories aren't told and we're led to believe that everybody in prison, um, one, are there because they deserve to be, uh, and two, um, that are like, uh, there are so many people who are in prison who are actually not guilty for the crime that they were incarcerated for. And there are also a lot of people who are, have been in prison for crimes that probably should not have been labeled criminal uh, in the first place. And we can tell that nowadays when, um, when somebody who is in jail for 20 years for stealing a CD player, right? Uh, a $40 CD player and you take 20 years of this person's life. One of the things we also uh, have been doing lately is challenging um, this whole narrative around uh, uh, removing the uh, involuntary servitude clause from the Constitution and the effects of that, right? Uh, and you, you would... It may be hard pressed for some people to believe and for some of us it's like, it's the same as what it was, but um, people were making the same arguments as they made in 1863 to keep um, the exception to slavery clause alive uh, in this country and in the state of California. I think what you're really talking about, and tell me if I'm right, is that many, many uh, jails, many prisons, they actually rent out the services of their imprisoned people Absolutely. At, a, at a very reduced cost, almost at slavery labor type uh. at, at, almost like we complain about sweatshops in China but we're not looking at the sweatshops operating within behind the walls of prisons people your audience will never guess what my job was the last eight years of my incarceration I guarantee nobody in your audience will guess I, I can't guess and what it, was your job my job the last eight years of my incarceration was I worked as a video technician I was the programmer for San Quentin Television television's closed circuit system and we produced not only did we program the television stations inside the prison but we also produced stories radio uh, and um, video stories uh, inside the prison uh, and I got paid a whopping uh, 37 cents an hour to do so 
right? And these and they made profits off of the. the of, of course, the institution. So the people inside the prison, we've all heard. I'm I'm, I'm assuming that about firefighters, right? Um, you know, we've we don't understand that there's video technicians, there's librarians, there's electricians, there's plumbers, like any any job that you could conceivably think of that is needed in the community is needed behind the walls of a prison and incarcerated people specifically I know in the state of California and it is my assumption from talking to people around the country it is equally the same that they work these jobs inside of a prison and in many cases they're getting paid pennies on the dollar if they get any wage at all. And you know th- this is this is very interesting because I, I think um, you know earlier on uh, in, in several of the programs that I do I talk we talk about crime and how it's handled and how it's punished right mm-hmm. and we have somebody that goes into a 7-Eleven and take a candy bar a misdemeanor or somebody who maybe grabs enough money cash out of a register and run that mm-hmm. makes it a felony mm-hmm. and they spend years in jail. Right. You spent 25 years Years right. in prison. Right. They spent all this time in jail or prison, and uh, we have the petty, the, not that we have the criminals, the real criminals, corporate executives that that cost you your life or thousands of dollars, mm-hmm. cost the lives of many of people based on their policies, right. and they are respected in society. There absolutely. is a determined problem in what we call crime in this country. And I, I think absolutely. when you talk about uh, sir, uh, restorative media, I think. I think you are trying to do something that we hope to do as well, and that is change the narrative. Change the narrative of what a criminal is. Change the narrative of what you do. We have to change that narrative. And I I do want to say this, that I in no way um, for myself personally um, am attempting to reduce the my accountability for the harms that I cause right. to my own family, to society, and even um, to the victims of the crimes for which um, I was found guilty and sentenced for. So I'm it's, it's not a, I'm not saying that. I want to cut what, you there because uh-huh. that is the reason I wanted to speak to you right. because that's one of the first things that you told me. I am not trying to say I'm not guilty of what right. I've done or I'm not taking accountability for what right. I've done. But remember the there's, uh, there are there, others. There's, there's other factors. There's a lot of other factors. Why? How would? And I always ask this question to people: How do you think a little boy who has so much reverence for life that he wouldn't even step on an ant? How did that little boy go from that? to being a gun-toting, gang-banging felon willing to put a gun to somebody's head. What happened in that child's life? So even if you can't uh, sympathize or empathize with the gray-bearded dude sitting in front of the, on your show now, perhaps you can identify with the little boy in your neighborhood that is still going through stuff or, or going through things right now. And because of what he's going through, because resources are not there for him, what is he gonna become? What opportunities are gonna be there for him? And then when a person goes to prison, they're in prison for all of these years, um, forced into uh, uh, a slave labor without proper compensation, and he's released and then told good luck when he could have spent that the last eight years of my incarceration with me working as a video technician, I could have been contributing to my family. I could have been contributing to taxes. I could have had something set up for myself so that when I came home, I wouldn't have to struggle. And 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 most people who are, I'm thankful that I had the resources and the wherewithal to build what I've been able to accomplish for myself. But a lot of people don't have that. Right. And so if they don't have that, what are, what are you leaving them with? If you mind me asking, what resources were you able to, I mean, I do understand that oh. most people that leave like, that leave prison, they're, they're just thrown out there. And then there are a lot of people who won't hire right. people who have records or who've been in it, prison. It, it won't hire. So it's a double-edged right. sword. Exactly. Right? You want them to stay on the level. You want them to stay straight. But at the same time, you, they're not being offered the opportunity to, to move on. How are you able to do it? Because right now you have a company that's called Restorative. Right. I, at Restorative Media, I had um, I had help. 
I had assistance. Um, you know, uh, I'm not somebody who would sit up and say, oh, I did it all by myself. No, I had a strong support group and I learned from the elders around me when I was incarcerated how to build a strong support network for myself when I came home. So I had a lot of people who invested in me right. uh, and invested knowledge in me, you know, from the first guy, you know, I learned the truth about my history from a black man on the prison tier. And so I had people who invested in me and I, when I came home, one of the strongest things that was taught to me was how to build myself a support network. And I was able to build a support network who who believed enough in me um, to support um, the work that I wanted to do. Um, and I invested in myself. Well, that is great. You know, in some countries, in uh, I think the Nordic countries, going to jail isn't going behind bars. Going to jail is really how to re-educate somebody, exactly. how, to, how to rehabilitate somebody, how to look at the humanity in people, irrespective of. And again, these are these are places where they have good social safety nets to ensure that nobody falls through the cracks. I think you're proof positive that po- a positive input into everybody actually gains mostly positive outcomes. Would you agree with that? I I would definitely agree with that. I I, I would definitely agree um, that you know, thanks to the, the the men on the tiers who supported me, thanks to the tons of volunteers who came inside the prison to build, and, and also thanks to there were certain um, correctional officers inside who ensured that we were getting what we need. Like, I wouldn't be in the position that I am if the warden of that institution had not allowed cameras in and permitted me to sit in the studio and play with these cameras for years on end, mm-hmm. right? Um, and and even though there's this larger system that has to be held accountable for the 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 slave um, type of mentality that exists, there's this larger system that has to be held accountable for that. There are individuals in that system who actually want to um, to want things to be better. They are working for the betterment, and 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 I think we all need to come together and figure out how do we make this system that uh, that is going to be equal and fair and just and equitable uh, for all of us. Troy Williams, it's been my pleasure. It's been my honor to speak to you. I've learned a lot, but most importantly, I think the audience needs to listen. Absolutely. This this is what, uh, and, 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 uh, and I think you, you cop to this, this is what real rehabilitation and, re, uh, and, and investing in folks look like. Absolutely. And you're returning it back. Absolutely. Many times over. It's my duty too. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate you, sir. All right. Absolutely, sir. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.